Why would they do this to me? Why would they change Chunky Blastoffs? And where's Ronnie? The sheer number of food items that have been discontinued over the years is shocking. It's kind of tragic to see all the foods that were cut off before their prime. So buckle up and prepare yourselves for a nostalgic and occasionally bizarre trip down memory lane. Here are more of the top 10 discontinued food items we miss. Mud and Bug Cereal. What's that? A grub. What's it look like? Ew, gross. From the name alone, this sounds like a cereal that completely warranted discontinuation. But this is one of those situations where you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Mud and Bug cereal was actually pretty great. What makes it even better is the fact that it's inspired by Disney's The Lion King. It's a testament to the popularity of the film that this cereal was released nine years after the movie's 1994 debut. In the movie, comedic duo Timon and Pumbaa frequently feast on bugs. As two of the film's most popular characters, the creation of a cereal based off of them and and their questionable culinary habits make sense. The mud part of the name references the base of the cereal, which were puffed grains that were both flavored and colored like chocolate. As for the bugs, the cereal also incorporated several different colored marshmallows in the shapes of insects. Slimy yet satisfying. However, this cereal probably isn't for everyone. Some people would probably be pretty disturbed at the idea of eating anything even remotely resembling a bug, even if it were actually just a marshmallow. If there were ever a time to bring back this cereal, it would be now, as The Lion King has had a massive resurgence in popularity thanks to the release of the remake. Starburst Hard Candy. I think I had some hard candy in there. Now, we all know Starburst are known for being chewy and juicy, but they took a different approach for this short-lived variation of their ever-popular candy. Reaching their brief peak in the 90s, Starburst Hard Candy were exactly what the name says, a hard version of Starbursts. This was more than likely an attempt by the folks at Starburst to be a direct competitor to Jolly Ranchers, which are a very popular fruit-flavored hard candy. Well, I am partial to Dolly Ranchers. This Starburst spin-off came in both original and tropical variations. These were sold in bags with multiple flavors inside, but some of the original bags also featured a fun little twist. While standard fruit flavors like cherry, strawberry, orange, and green apple were included, they also included a mystery flavor. These were clear in color, so you couldn't just guess the flavor by its color. And while it was a cool idea, even that didn't keep Starburst hard candy from being ultimately discontinued. For those who wish these were still around or would have loved to give them a try, you're not completely out of luck. So you're telling me there's a chance. Starburst actually makes candy canes, which are said to be very similar in taste to the hard candies. Give them a try if you can get your hands on them. Orbit's Drink. How about a nice cool drink? Vermin. This Canadian beverage was sorely underappreciated. Orbitz was an innovative, non-carbonated drink. Its discontinuation, which occurred shortly after its 1997 release, was attributed to poor sales. If people had just given this odd beverage a chance, it might have made it big. If you've never heard of Orbitz, think bubble tea, but different. The fruit-flavored drinks were clear and had small, sugary balls floating in them. The balls came in different colors, depending on the flavor of the beverage, and were essentially made of gelatin. The drink's signature feature was the fact that the balls were suspended throughout the beverage. Due to the drink's funky appearance and the shape of its glass bottle, people often compared its appearance to that of a lava lamp. I drank a lava lamp. It wasn't lava. Orbitz was flavored in several different fruit combinations, some of which were quite unusual, such as pineapple, banana, cherry, coconut, which was basically the entire produce section in one drink, but it worked. Unfortunately, advertisers went for the easy way out with Orbitz, labeling it with the tagline, the drink with balls. Needless to say, that campaign failed horribly, pushing the marketing team to try a different strategy, where they pushed the drink as a futuristic, out-of-this-world beverage from Planet Orbitz. In the end, its strange appearance and poor marketing pushed consumers away from Orbitz, ending its run prematurely. Keebler Munchums Oh no, that's the old Keebler's place! Let's just back away slowly. Let's kick this list off with this popular snack from the 90s. Keebler Munchums were crackers baked to the point where they were so crispy, you could almost call them chips. 
While more flavors were added after their initial success, Keebler Munchums originally came in ranch, cheddar, original, and sour cream and onion. So not only did they crunch like chips, they tasted like them too. Keebler Munchums were the ultimate compromise, because while they were healthier than regular potato chips, they could still satisfy even the strongest Pringles craving. Give me those damn Pringles! They made a great companion to lounge on the couch and watch Sunday night football or Saturday morning cartoons with. With them out of the picture, the only options were to turn to regular crackers or regular chips. You can probably guess which one out in the end. There doesn't seem to be any given reason why Munchums were discontinued in the early 2000s. All we can say on the matter is that it was a real shame. Sprite Remix Remix, yo! Released in 2003, Sprite Remix was a line of fruit-flavored sodas based off of popular soft drink Sprite. There were three flavors, Sprite Tropical Remix, Sprite Berry Clear Remix, and Sprite Aruba Jam Remix. And no, we have no idea what Aruba Jam is supposed to taste like. The Remix lineup was actually pretty great. These sodas were colorless, just like the original Sprite, and like the original, they were also caffeine-free. Sold alongside these flavors were Remix Flavor Hits packets, which allowed for a bit of DIY. All you had to do was tear open the package, pour the powder into your regular Sprite, give it a stir, and voila! Technically, if you were feeling ambitious, you could mix these packets together and come up with your own unique flavors. But that probably wasn't recommended. I don't think. If you made it through the early 2000s without ever hearing about this soda, it's probably because they were only sold for two years. Their short run made them pretty easy to miss. However, if you never got the chance to try them, you're in luck. In 2015, 10 years after their discontinuation, Sprite came out with a soda called Sprite Tropical Mix. Sounds pretty similar to Sprite Tropical Remix, right? That's because it is. So while the other flavors have been lost to time, this one has forced its way back into the world. This re-release was initially supposed to be a short-term thing, but apparently the beverage was popular enough for Coca-Cola to fully commit to it, because it's still being sold to this day. Almost Home Cookies Is there a cookie? Mm -hmm. Nabisco's line of cookies called Almost Home were meant to be as close to homemade cookies as you could possibly buy off the shelves, hence the name Almost Home. The commercials for these cookies featured their slogan, which was, You can almost taste the recipe. These cookies from Nabisco were among the first brands of soft cookies. They used much more shortening than the average store-bought cookie, which is what helped them achieve their soft, fresh-out-of-the-oven texture and taste. People swear that these would stay soft forever, even if the box were left open. The box and logo featured an embroidered yarn design, which was supposed to go with the whole homey vibe that these were trying to give off. It just needs a few homey touches. Homey touches? They were a huge hit when first released, to the point where Nabisco put out 15 or so different flavors, including real chocolate chip, peanut butter fudge, oatmeal raisin, and old-fashioned sugar, to name a few. However, sales started to decline, and they eventually made their way off of grocery store shelves. Nabisco currently makes a chewy variation of their ever-popular Chips Ahoy brand of cookies. However, fans scoff at the idea that these are adequate replacements, as the texture and taste are nothing like the original, beloved, almost home cookies. Lunchables Fudge Brownie I hear Angela's party will have double fudge brownies. Lunchables were school lunch classics. In fact, the original Lunchables are still being made today. During their peak in the 90s, they also released a Fun Snacks variation, which were more geared towards DIY desserts than actual lunches. They have since been discontinued, and though many different kinds were released, including s'mores, marshmallow crispy squares, and cookies and frosting, the one that's missed the most has to be the fudge brownie. Mm, brownies! The Lunchables fudge brownie packs included a brownie, which happened to be made by Hostess, as well as a packet of fudge icing and sprinkles so you could assemble your own perfect brownie. Lunchables even made a claymation TV ad to promote the snack, featuring a kid creatively assembling his own fudge brownie. 
As far as the future of the Lunchables Fudge Brownie goes, there was a failed Change.org petition started to try to bring these back, and people clamoring on the internet, but nothing. Seems like these are unfortunately forever a thing of the past. Oatmeal Swirlers Ooh, oatmeal! What a delightful treat! Oatmeal makes for a nutritious breakfast, but many people, especially children, are turned off of it because they find it to be bland and boring. General Mills took a stab at making this healthy food more appealing by coming up with oatmeal swirlers in 1989. If you're up to date with food trends, you'll know that steel-cut oats and overnight oatmeal are all the rage these days. While they're tasty and nutrient-dense, the required preparation time isn't feasible for everyone. Instant oatmeal is infinitely more convenient, as it takes just minutes to prepare and no pre-planning. The longest part of the process is waiting for the water to boil. I hate waiting. With most instant oatmeal, once you've stirred the boiling water into the dry oatmeal mix, your breakfast is ready to be eaten. However, oatmeal swirlers added an extra step. Along with packages of plain oatmeal, you were provided with packets of icing. The packages allowed you to draw designs on your oatmeal with the icing. This is one situation where playing with your food was actually encouraged. Some people would draw pictures, while others would set up games, such as tic-tac-toe. Although it probably wasn't a good idea to get too caught up in the drawing part of things, since if it took too long, you'd be left with cold oatmeal, which isn't remotely appetizing. Hostess Choco Bliss It's layered, delicious, chocolate, and I want some. To all the chocolate addicts out there, a word of warning. This entry is going to go into graphic detail of the chocolatey properties of Choco Bliss and is enough to incite severe cravings. Hostess's Choco Bliss doesn't look like the most appealing dessert out there, but what it lacks in appearance, it more than makes up for in taste. These snack-sized cakes were dubbed the Chocolate Lover's Dream, and their advertisements were uncomfortably steamy. There's loving chocolate, and then there's, well, whatever it was those Choco Bliss commercials from 1986 were trying to portray. The layered cake brought so many different chocolatey elements to the table. There were two layers of Devil's Food Cake, with a light, creamy chocolate icing in between them, and a heavy, rich chocolate frosting on top. That's three different kinds of chocolate in just one food item. Triple chocolate! Can you say decadent? You may be wondering where these delicious sounding cakes went. Unfortunately, we don't have an answer. They seemed to disappear overnight, sometime in the late 80s or early 90s. They were actually quite popular, which makes the whole thing even more confusing. No reason was ever given for their discontinuation. In fact, Hostess didn't even really acknowledge it. Hershey's Swoops Hershey's Swoops lineup was one of the best things to ever happen to the candy industry. These candies were unique because they were packaged and shaped like Pringles chips, except they were made completely of chocolate. Several different varieties were released, most of them inspired by popular Hershey's chocolates. These chip-shaped chocolates first hit shelves in 2003, but were ultimately discontinued in 2006. The concept was a promising one, but in the end, the sales weren't what Hershey had hoped. It actually was a huge disappointment. Sales just weren't good enough for them to justify continuing to produce the product. While it's a shame, you can also kind of see why this food item didn't soar to great heights. Once the novelty wore off, consumers realized that swoops were just the same old chocolate in a different form. They didn't really bring anything new to the table outside of their shape. While these thin slices of chocolate were good, why would you settle for swoops when you had the option to buy a satisfying chocolate bar in exactly the same flavor? Regardless, this food item was a cool idea, and we're sad that swoops and chocolate bars couldn't peacefully exist alongside one another. Treat yourself to more and tap that screen for our next great video. Checking us out for the first time? Then take a second to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.